Hi guys, welcome to part two of our Gunpei Yokoi tribute. In part one, we covered Gunpei Yokoi's greatest triumph, the Nintendo Game Boy. Today, we're going to cover his greatest failure, the Nintendo Virtual Boy. The Virtual Boy came out in Japan on July 21st, 1995, and in the US, we got it on August 14th, 1995. It retailed for $180, and the US packing game was Mario Tennis. So the Nintendo 3DS isn't actually Nintendo's first foray into the 3D world. Neither was the Virtual Boy, as Nintendo released some 3D glasses for the Famicom system in Japan. And also, who could forget the 3D option in Rad Racer? But the Virtual Boy was the first system from Nintendo where you could get 3D right out of the box. Here's what you got with the Virtual Boy. You have the main head unit, which mounts on a stand, the control pad, Comes with an optional battery pack, which is kind of ironic because the Virtual Boy really wasn't portable. This is the Virtual Boy's controller. You have two directional pads. The idea behind this was that you could move in 3D space, one on the 2D plane and one on the Z axis. In our last episode, we talked about Yokoi's philosophy of lateral thinking of withered technology, which helped make the Game Boy a huge success. However, applied to the Virtual Boy, it proved very costly. The Virtual Boy is actually a 32-bit system powered by the same CPU as NEC's PCFX. However, the Virtual Boy's display utilizes red LEDs, and gamers who looked at this red and black monochrome screen felt like this was only a modest upgrade from the Game Boy and not truly next gen. But let's talk about the Virtual Boy's 3D technology. The Virtual Boy achieved the 3D effect through parallax, and I don't mean the Green Lantern villain. The Virtual Boy had two LED displays, one for your left eye and one for your right eye. So the image you saw in your left eye was slightly shifted from the image you saw in your right eye. When your brain sees them together, through parallax, you achieve the 3D effect. Let's talk about games. The Virtual Boy had a very short lifespan, so only 18 games in all were released for it. Over here in the US, we only got 14 of those 18 released. First, let's talk about the packing game, Mario Tennis. Mario Tennis is actually a really fun game. It's tennis with Mario characters. Nintendo had planned on releasing a link cable so you could play one-on-one -on -one competitively with a friend, Unfortunately, the system was canceled before this link cable was released, so you're stuck playing with the computer. Probably the best game for the Virtual Boy is Wario Land. This is a great platformer with great graphics and made inventive use of the Virtual Boy's 3D capabilities. You can make Wario jump back and forth between the foreground and the background. On the flip side of things, Waterworld is probably the worst game for the Virtual Boy. Apart from a nicely rendered title screen, the game has very little to offer. You float around in a boat and shoot people. Yeah. That's it. Waterworld is actually one of the rarer games for the Virtual Boy as it was released late in its console's lifespan. It also was one of the rare third-party games for the Virtual Boy. One of the reasons why the Virtual Boy failed was lack of third-party support. Nintendo canceled the system the following year in August of 1996. Nintendo had hoped to sell 3 million units the first year, but ended up only selling 800,000. Gunpei Yokoi shortly left the company there afterwards. It was Nintendo's first big failure, and some say Yokoi was the fall guy and he was fired. Others say that's BS and Yokoi was actually planning on retiring at age 50, but he stayed on in Nintendo to see the Virtual Boy through to market. Some speculate that the Virtual Boy was never supposed to go to market in its current state. It was more of a working prototype that went to mass market. Nintendo supposedly was trying to get the Virtual Boy quickly out to the market because they wanted to focus on the upcoming Nintendo 64 development. Yokoi left Nintendo after 31 years of loyal service he went on to form his own company called Koto Laboratories. At the time of its demise, Nintendo kind of treated the Virtual Boy as its red-headed bastard stepchild. Kind of ironic given its color. But it soon gained a reputation as a cult system and it's made cameo appearances in games like No More Heroes and Super Smash Bros. With the advent of the 3DS, could we possibly see some ports of Virtual Boy games? I think people should really play Wario Land. It's a really great platformer. Well, that's all the time we have for part two. On part three, we're gonna talk about Gumpei's last system, the Wonder Swan. Happy collecting, thanks for watching.